So first, uh, let's talk about buy it, uh, how to get it, how to, let's say, harvest it. Uh, in a couple of videos, in comments, uh, people asked me what kind of a buy it I'm using, and as you can see, I'm using this hairline, Turkey buy it, and uh, the only two colors I'm using, most of the time actually, not the only two, but most of the time would be the green one, olive one, as you can see here, olive, and uh, the brown one, this one here. Uh, I don't have a package of this one, but I mean, you can see the color very well, so it doesn't matter, I guess. Uh, this one is already pre-cut, so you just get buy it. I prefer, to be honest, this one, because you get more to it, and you know, very fast like I'm gonna explain you why so first of all let's talk about length uh, one would think that like near the end uh, the, the, the beginning of the stem this firm stem here that here should have like the longest bite actually that's not the case uh, the longest bite is uh, as you advance toward the feather it's somewhere around here like you can see how long is this like, let's compare it, this is one centimeter square, so let's put it on one of the lines, and as you can see, it's like three point something, three point four, like three and a half centimeters long, or even more, even four, yeah, it's four centimeter long, here, you can see it. Okay, now the focus is a little bit hunting, but it's okay, I guess. So. Uh, when you tie flies, the larger the fly, the longer the bite you need. Now, uh, many people wouldn't consider it, but this is perfect for tying bodies as well. And I will show you that as well. So without any uh, further ado, uh, let's just skip into tying. Uh, now let's talk about materials that I'm going to use for this video. Uh, I'm going to use this TMCO 14 uh, hook 900 BL. Uh, I'm going to use it for wet fly as well as for dry fly. And in same size, so it's 14, I'm going to use this uh, jig hook. Uh, it's the same shape as the Hiko jig uh, with a 3.5 mm bead. I'm not sure, I think it's 3.3, I think it's 3 mm bead on this one. And uh, I'm going to use Olive by it. I'll show you both ways this way and this way here. Now, for the wet fly, I'm going to use this beautiful bird. It's called Bamboo Partridge. It has very uh, small feathers, as you can see here. This is neck feather. Oh. So, this neck feather. Uh, is very very small as you can see and it has very delicate fibers but this this one on, on the saddle they also have beautiful coloration and they are like very very useful same as uh, partridge it's just that they have like much finer stem and uh, they are much softer than partridge uh, for the thread on the wet fly and on the dry fly I'm going to use this one my focus is a little bit slow, sorry for that. So it's a UTC 70 denier in red. And uh, for the wings on the dry fly, I'm going to use a little bit of CDC, kind of feather that has this shape, like kind of triangular shape. So let's get into straight tying. So as I said, I'm going to show you how to tie a uh, couple of flies and it's going to be from the bottom towards the surface so nymph, wet and eventually dry so the full life circle more or less uh, I'm going to use by it both sides this side and this side so you will know what you get with each side uh, now let's go with the nymph and I'm going to use hook size 14 with three millimeter bead and just because I don't want to make too much buildup 
I'm using this thread and this is 18 0 uh, Semperfly Nano Silk which is super thin for the tail I'm going to use Cocktail Leon and you can use whatever you want you want rooster feather partridge feather everything will work don't worry about that so you can always find some alternatives to it now as you can see I'm over I'm uh, building with up materials over here and not near the tail so I catch up my materials in the thorax area rather than in tail area so as you, uh, in more or less touching turns you go towards the rear end of the hook and now I'm going to cut one of these just one you don't need more so one of these and then just pull it out So this is almost, well, it is like a bayet. As you can see, it has this shiny side, it has this ridge side. And I want this ridge side to face upwards and shiny side downwards. So I get my segmentation this way. Okay. Now I'm touching turns and I'm getting my taper over here. You will see it very soon. So I'm gonna snip all the excess now. That's it. Now use your dubbing needle and put some uh, super glue on the underbody of the fly uh, just to reinforce everything to make your fly more teeth resistant if that's possible because by it same as any other material feather material is not too too strong so what I do I just apply it over the body you don't have to spread everything evenly because you will see in a second the your buy it is going to spread it for you okay now start everything nicely it twisted a little bit for at first but now it's okay now as you go forward with this you can slightly overlap but you're getting these segments immediately and as you can see the super glue is being pushed by a bayet you can see it now even better I guess so you are going to distribute with your bayet all this super glue and as you reach here you're going to cover it up with the uh, dubbing so it's not going to be any problem here now this is it I don't need more and one blocking turn now as you, uh, as you can notice maybe um, there is a flat surface area here and I'm going to use it to place my thorax I'm gonna create a dubbing loop right now and into dubbing loop I'm gonna put heavy dubbing twister which will keep tension on, every, on everything here now you take CDC feather and you don't want to use the whole one of course just use a piece of it it doesn't need to be uh, too overly dressed so before you put your CDC in the loop uh, just dub loose just dub short segment of any dubbing you prefer and on one of the threads over here so and the same length you will put just CDC inside so okay here's my CDC I'll put it in a paper clamp paper clip like so and then I'm gonna cut it so I'm, I'm leaving tag ends over here a little bit now you can just pull this up so it's easier to place it where, you, where it should be placed and then with your flat finger just push everything together like so then spin your dubbing twister fast and then go back and forth with your finger to allow it to spin around the thread when you have enough or your thorax material just cinch everything down some people like to stroke back you can do that if you want 
what I like to do, I like to slide it down the tungsten bead when I reach it and everything will actually push it back. Now if you think you have too much material, as I do now, just pull back and then catch with your thread this noodle and cut it off. Don't overdress your flies. I mean, I know that people will say you can remove material, you cannot add material, but why not making the fly from the beginning as it's supposed to be. I'll just color the thread, make a wet finish knot and that's it. So this is the bottom part of the cycle, mayfly cycle. So this is nymph, now let's go into the wet fly. So I'll do the same from the tail uh, with the difference here it's going to be bamboo partridge but everything else up until CTC is going to be the same. Now, uh, as I said, everything is the same. Uh, I'll find some bamboo partridge and add it to create some legs over here. And I'll just try to find some uh, appropriate sized feather. As you can see, it has very thin stem over here. And that's what I really, really like with this feather. Okay, I'll just attach it here with a bare stem. Uh, as you can see, it's like just to help me turn around and make that initial wrap. That's why here it's more bare than here. Near on my near side, and now uh, I'm gonna cut. Okay, now. I'll just add slight dubbing, slight pinch of dubbing, just a tiny little pinch of it. And just to add a little bit of shine here. And I'm going backwards, not forward. I like to go with my feather, oh sorry, with my thread through the feather and reinforce it here. So Oh, like this, and when I finish, like maybe one or two turns, I just let it hang. I spin my bobbin clockwise, so I'll get round shape of the thread, and I go through the hackle, with last one going around the hackle, once or twice, just to trap it, as you can see, I even broke it, but it stayed there. Then one here, that's where I just used nails, but it's, you're not supposed to do this, I made a mistake, anyway, I'll do the whip finish knot right now, and whip finish knot will also create this, this angle of the legs, so with whip finish knot, I'm gonna push back those legs, I'm not going to do it prior to whip finish knot, because if you first uh, if you first use your thread to position those legs and then you do a bit finish knot you're gonna end up with a huge head and huge head is like not a, 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 like it's not proportional and doesn't look good I mean fish probably won't mind but it, it but the fly is going to look very very ugly so as you can see this is a very simple fly so very easy fly you go with your thread through those uh, barbules just to reinforce it here. Uh, so olive one. So first and second fly were made with this part of the feather. So barbules, longer ones. And the uh, last one I will make it with a proper bayet. And then you can compare if you can see any difference. Uh, I just I'm just showing you this because like if you don't have any bayet, you can use any large feather. Just take one of these uh, and wrap it around, or even two. Sometimes you need to use two because not all the feathers will have this uh, flat side here. So I'll start with, uh, again, with very thin thread because I don't want to create any buildup here. 
uh, and also I'm going to uh, do a split tail technique just for the fun and I'm using Cobb de Leon for the tail uh, I'll choose even number if possible so like four or six barbules sometimes it's difficult to count these things I think I have six so I'll just make them even and then I'll pinch them hard together and take them off the stem and then I'll measure the length and transfer it now as you can see there is almost there, there is hardly any build up here so I'll just go with my thread backwards now I need a piece of thread to go in between those in between those tails and I'll try to count three and three and separate them prior to letting the the, 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 the thread between them so just push with your thumb and then choose half one, one side and on the other okay now when you have them spread like this just go with your thread around the hook band like so and go through it don't pull too hard right now just make a couple of wraps position whatever you need to position first and then slowly pull because if you pull too hard you're going going to end up with like too too much spread uh, or your tails and you're gonna you, you may even deform them and like it's going to look ugly and you don't want that okay now I'll prepare a bias for you here and as I said at the beginning of the video I'm going to use the tip part because it's longer so I just like to, to use longer ones because it's easier to work with now in a video called be it turkey by a trick I did I cut the bias lengthwise and you will see soon why I did it I'm basically cutting this shiny side and this is going to allow me to go further up the, the hook so closer to the eye the same rule applies now here you want your shiny side facing down and this ridged side facing upwards and don't go all the way to the tail but when you start touching your tail like so then stop you don't want to put them together like you don't want to squeeze them together again now I want to create even a nice taper and now you can notice why I'm using this why I'm using this thin thread because I'm doing like many wraps around them with my cat again and with thicker thread is going to be very very difficult now I'm gonna cut the excess here and create this taper as you can see like from here to here I need to make up a little bit of thread okay and this is it now I need to put some protection here super gluing gel gel and it's the same as I did it with nymph and uh, and the wet fly prior to this I'm talking a little bit in lower voice the kid is sleeping in another room so I don't want to wake him up okay so just go and overlap slightly and you will have this like ripped effect and now you will also see why I cut this now it's going to get more narrow so it's going to be more neat finish as I reach the front part of the fly now 
Now, if you make too abrupt transition between your thread and your hook, you're gonna end up with something like this. This is my mistake over here. But since I've used glue, it's not going to be a problem for the fly. And I'm going to cover cover it up, cover it up, but like try to make a smooth transition. Now I'm gonna use some CDC for the wings. Now I, I chose a, a rather big feather and I'm going to remove the lowest white fluff here. I don't like it. I'm just gonna use the gray part of the feather. And now I'm gonna show you how I do, like how I remove the stem as well. So you need square shaped heckle pliers and just spin it around it. Each rep going under the previous one. And you will see that like you get two halves of the CDC up and down. Open your heckle pliers and pull out and then take one half and another half and fold them together and then this will end you up with bare stem on one side and CDC on the other side. As you can see it's a very rich feather so I'm gonna place it where I want my wings to begin like so check everything if everything is right if it is give it a couple of wraps here and then don't cut it flush try to cut it by an angle like so and by doing so you're going and uh, you're going to have those butt ends where which you're going to catch with your thread right now and this is going to re reinforce your cdc wings because you're catching each layer of cdc now just go a couple of turns behind like so just to help you now you can end up however you want i like my cdc dubbing mix which i also have a video about uh, sorry, it's not CDC dubbing mix, it's squirrel dubbing mix, my mistake. So, just tiny pinches on your thread. And because I'm imitating Olive, sometimes those males have red heads. I'm also going to end up with red head here. Just a tiny, it's like a detail, it's not an important part, I don't think it's a trigger for the fish. Now I'm, go I'm covering up the, the mess I made previously. So I'm gonna crisscross it. And let me see, yeah, looks right. I'm gonna go towards the hook eye. And that's about it. Everything's covered. Good. Now, as I did on the wet fly, you don't need to form your head. Just pull everything away from you and form your head with a whip finish knot. If you need three, four whip finish knots, just use as many as you want. It's going to create more durable fly as opposed to creating a head and then doing whip finish knots. Uh, by creating head, you're creating bulk. And with bulk, you can't allow yourself to tie too many with finish knots as I'm doing right now. Like this is the third one, and I still don't have big head. I want, I want this head to be noticeable. So I'll do one more here, and this is it. I mean, this thin thread allows you to do like so many turns without creating bulk. It is, it is incredible. And they, these guys are making even thinner th thread. This is, as I said, like 18 zero. And they make 24 zero. I haven't tried it, but I want to. Now I will add red Sharpie. Just press it here and here, and that's it. You got yourself a nice olive, nice olive mayfly. Well, it bleeds into the dubbing, but never mind, it's okay.
let's call it a hotspot, my mistake, my bad here. So after you do everything I did, you can just pull your like from down up wings and you can use your nail and your finger to shape up a little bit the CDC. Not necessary, but it can be useful sometimes. So I showed you a couple of tricks how to make narrow uh, by it, how to split the, uh, the, the, the tail, maybe the easiest way, I don't know, and uh, how to remove the stem from the CDC all in one fly. Uh, now let's compare those bodies. More or less it looks the same. And I used two different parts of the feather. Uh, I hope guys you find this useful. If you find this useful and you like it, please give it a like, subscribe, share it, comment, and see you next time, next weekend.